Amazing scenes there. Thanks for staying with us. It's time to talk business. The federal government is set to reopen the Trans Niger pipeline that transports about 180,000 barrels of crude oil on a daily basis. The pipeline was shut down six months ago due to vandalism and oil theft of the export facility. And Bonnie Light, one of Nigeria's crude oil grades, is transported through the TNP to a designated export terminal. The pipeline also serves as part of the country's gas liquids evacuation infrastructure, which is vital for domestic power generation and the export of liquefied gas. But the TNP was closed by Shell about six months ago after it was vandalized, which stored the transportation of 180,000 barrels per day of crude via the channel. And the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, has disclosed that the total amount from bank fraud and forgery cases stands at over 120 billion naira for the year 2020. This represents a decline by 40.98% when compared with the over 204 billion naira recorded in 2020. 19. Meanwhile, the number of fraud cases surged by 177.10% in 2020. Well, that's according to the NDIC report and annual reports are posted on the corporation's website. The surge in fraud cases, particularly in digital and electronic payment systems, uh, remains a growing concern in the financial system. Now, according to the report, 10 out of 30 banks accounts for 119 billion naira, or 99.17% of the total amount involved in frauds and forgeries cases uh, during the year in review. Now, according to the NDIC, ATM card-related fraud had the highest frequency of fraud cases, followed by mobile banking. Let's talk agriculture now. As experts have advised Nigeria to intensify efforts at improving food security for the benefit of its teeming population. The made this known in the nation's capital, Abuja, at a forum on evolving technologies where journalists who have distinguished themselves in agricultural reportage were also recognized. Lara Afolaya was there and tells us more. Nigeria's huge population is projected to rise even further, and food security is a concern to many who feel the country should be doing much more to provide enough food for its people. It has been projected by the year 2050, our population will hit 400 million plus. The question is, are we also working hard to produce sufficient food that can comfortably fit the population that we are daily producing or increasing in this country? Certainly the answer is no. One of the means being suggested for better food production in the country is agricultural biotechnology. Gains have already been recorded in areas of awareness creation as well as commercialization of modified crops for planting. Scientists say this is a critical step to enhance food production in Nigeria. We are confident that the impact of our advocacy and campaign will become so clear to all that the antis will not be um, accepted or accommodated any longer to the extent that they won't. Science must provide the answers for us. Luckily, Nigeria has invested hugely in establishing institutions, faculties of agriculture, and several bodies. The media has helped promote this evolving technology for agricultural production in the country, and the scientists here charged the media to improve on these efforts. Technology development has ever succeeded anywhere in the world without the media playing a very significant role or building its propaganda and showing its acceptance to whatever has been taking place in the research area. To recognize outstanding journalists in all media journals involved in the coverage of agribiotic stories in sub-Saharan Africa. Also, biotechnology is producing crops that are resistant to drought, parasites, and diseases. Often recognizes exemplary journalism. Members of the press are also given awards for their reportage of issues around agricultural biotechnology. Lara Folayo, TVC News, Abuja. 
Taking away from the agriculture sector, the Nigerian stock market lost 1.48 trillion naira in the third quarter of 2022 as investors shifted investments uh, to fixed market instruments. In the period under review, the stock market witnessed an increase in interest rates to 15.5 percent of the third consecutive rate hike, and the highest since the NPC replaced the minimum uh, rediscount rate with the monetary policy rate NPR in 2006. The stock market in the first half of 2022 maintained positive momentum from the previous year in the first half of 2022 with a return of 21.3% over impressive corporate earnings by listed companies. From a quarterly perspective, the market mood was bullish in the two quarters with Q1 returning 10.3% higher than 9.9% in the second quarter. Outside Nigeria, the final quarter of the year got off to a shaky start today with world stocks languishing at their lowest levels since late 2021. The global economy was still reeling from the COVID-19 pandemic. European equity markets were a sea of red with the stock 600 index down at 1.4 percent, while U.S. stock futures recorded mixed trading and MSCI's world equity index fell to its lowest level since 2020. London's FTSE 100 stock index was down 1%, falling in line with other markets. Asian stocks are mostly fell in holiday-themed trade, although Japanese market found support on strong energy and semiconductor shares. In the United Kingdom, the government has reversed plans to cut the country's highest rate of income tax, marking a humiliating U-turn for Prime Minister Liz Truss's new administration. And Monday's move came after more than a week of turmoil on financial markets, which saw the pound plummet to record lows following Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng's so-called mini-budget announcement on September 23. Announcing the government's U-turn, Mr. Kwarteng said the proposal to slash the tax rate made up of about uh, £2 billion pounds out of the overall £45 billion pounds tax cutting plan has become a distraction from the current administration's overriding mission to tackle the challenges facing the country. However, noted that the package of measures were aimed at boosting growth by cutting taxes and regulation funded by vast government borrowings and included a proposal to scrap the top 45% rate of income tax paid on earnings above £150,000 a year. And oil prices on the international market jumped up today more than 3% in early Asian trade today as OPEC Plus, uh, Plus considers cutting outputs by more than 1 million barrels a day for its biggest reduction since the pandemic in a bid to support the market. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude offers $82.93 per barrel with an upsurge of 4.33%. And Brent crude futures also experienced an upward price margin of 4.11%, selling for $88.64 per barrel. And Bonnie Light uh, moves to the red zone, selling at $88.16 per barrel, with a downward price review of 1.65%. For the OPEC basket, crude oil offers $92.34 per barrel, with a price decline of 0.45%.